Provincial Capitals of China, Part 3. We will now introduce the capitals of five more provinces. Jiangsu, Jiangxi, Jilin, Liaoning, Qinghai. Jiangsu is the combination of Jiang, a word for river, and the first part of the name of the city Suzhou. The populous municipality of Shanghai is not part of Jiangsu province, but note the city's location for reference. The capital of Jiangsu province straddles the Yangtze River and is called Nanjing. The name combines the words for south and capital. This city dates back to the 5th century before the Common Era. Besides its current role as a provincial capital, it was an on-again, off-again capital of China for almost 2,000 years. Nanjing, the southern capital. 1368 of the Common Era. After designating Nanjing as his capital, the first emperor of the Ming dynasty, Ming Taizu, decided it needed an improved defensive wall. For many centuries, Chinese cities had included a rectangular walled section, but Nanjing's new wall was destined to throw away that model and leverage the topography of the city. Workers spent 20 years building what was to become one of the longest city walls in China, encompassing more than 20 square miles. In a previous video, we mentioned the first bridge to cross the lower reaches of the Yangtze in Wuhan. In Nanjing, we find another historic bridge. Completed in 1968, it was the first bridge across China's longest river built without foreign assistance. That was more than 50 years ago. Today, China is a world leader in engineering and bridge construction. Now let's move our focus to the province of Jiangxi. Its name is the combination of the words for river and west. Jiangxi's capital is Nanchang. Literally, the name means Southern Prosperity. The name is said to be derived from a slogan coined by Liu Bang, the first emperor of the Han Dynasty. He proclaimed, Great wealth at the southern border region, prosperous Southland. An important ancient landmark in Nanchang is the Pavilion of Prince Tung. This structure was originally built in 653 during the Tang Dynasty, and along with Wuhan's Yellow Crane Tower, it is considered to be one of the great towers of China. Today's Nanchang is a modern city, known for a variety of industries, including machinery, textiles, electronics, and steel. Jumping north, we come to the remaining two northeastern provinces in the area often known in the west as Manchuria. The first of these is Jilin, whose name is the transliteration of a Manchu phrase meaning along the river. Its capital is Changchun, which consists of the word for long and the word for springtime. We previously encountered Cheng, the word meaning long. We saw it in Changjiang, the Chinese name for the Yangtze, and in Changsha, capital of Hunan province. Remember the word. Later, we will see it yet again. According to many scholars, the name Changcheng, like the provincial name Jilin, is the product of transliteration of words from another language. The origin of Changchun goes even farther back in time to the language of a pre-Manchu group known as the Su Shen. They inhabited the area almost 7,000 years ago. The summary of a prayer that they recited when making sacrifices to the sky was transliterated into Chinese as Cha A Chong. Over the centuries, this adaptation evolved into Chang Chun. Other scholars disagree and say the name is simply derived from the Chinese word for a locally common plant, the periwinkle. 
Changchun did not become a town of any great significance until a branch of the Chinese Eastern Railroad routed through the town at the beginning of the 20th century. In 1931, the Japanese invaded northeast China and set up a government headed by Pu Yi, who had been the deposed last emperor of the Chinese Qing Dynasty. Changchun was temporarily renamed Xinjiang and proclaimed the capital of Manchukuo. Changchun recovered its name after the end of the Second World War. Changchun became a manufacturing center in the 1950s. Factories sprouted to build cars, tractors, and railway carriages, as well as engines and other related components. Today, Changchun remains an important manufacturing city and transportation hub. South of Jilin, we come to the province of Liaoning. The Liao River flows south through the middle of this province, Liaoning, the pacified Liao. Its capital city lies north of the Hun River. Another name for this part of the river is Xin. We have previously explained that Yang refers to a city north of a river and/or south of mountains, so the name of the capital is quite logical. Shenyang. Shenyang has a long history. Archaeological evidence shows it was first inhabited 8,000 years ago by an agricultural civilization we know as the Xinlu. As a city, it first appeared around 300 before the Common Era during the period known as the Warring States. But its greatest significance derives from its control by the Manchus. That term refers to a sedentary agricultural people in what is now northeastern China. In 1625, Shenyang became the capital city of the Manchus. It is sometimes known as Mukden, the westernized version of its Manchu name. In the middle of the 17th century, the Manchu army crossed the Great Wall and overthrew the Ming Dynasty. Shenyang is therefore considered the birthplace of the Qing Dynasty. The walled imperial palace complex of the Manchu capital city is quite remarkable, and it's been compared to Beijing's Forbidden City. We will now leap to the western part of China, where we find the province of Qinghai, named for a huge saltwater lake in the northeastern part of the province. Near this lake, we find the capital Xining. Xi means west, and Ning. We have encountered this word previously. It means pacified. The capital city straddles the Huangshui River, which is a tributary of the Yellow River. The ancient Silk Road passed through Xining, and for centuries, it was a commercial hub and fortified border outpost. As far back as the Han Dynasty, Xining served as a barrier to raids and invasions by various nomadic groups to the west. Xining is home to the beautiful Dongguan Mosque, a spiritual focal point for more than 600 years. It is evidence of both the historic and current importance of Islam in this region. The city also holds beautiful Zen Buddhist, Confucian, and Taoist temples. Close to Xining is the Kumbum Monastery, holy to followers of Tibetan Buddhism. As both a crossroads and border area, this was a location where, over the millennia, numerous cultures met, fought, and eventually coexisted. Xining, the pacified West. This video has introduced the capital cities of five Chinese provinces. The next video in this series is Provincial Capitals of China, Part Four. It will introduce the capitals of six more provinces. Stay tuned.